international speaker, award winner, multiple streams of income. How did it all start? I remember growing up in East London and not being able to afford nice things. So, so literally it was like every penny counted. Every, every. After leaving school, I became a psychiatric nurse. I know it sounds crazy, but I fell in love with caring. So when you're talking about, you know, following your heart, my heart's always been in helping. My passion serving. It's always been helping, giving. That sparked something in me that if you can add value to others, you'll be okay. Hey, in this video, I'm gonna be interviewing the one and only Jesson James, a good friend of mine, business partner, and multi-millionaire business owner, where we're gonna be looking at Jesson's story and really sharing some top tips with you on how to start, scale, and grow a business. We're gonna be looking at where Jesson came from as a youngster, to how he became a psychiatric nurse, and then went into the world of business where he is serving and selling and helping people just like yourself. If you're new to the channel, make sure you smash the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, give me a like, and of course, leave me any questions or comments below. So let's get straight into this. It's gonna be a game changer. We have a super exciting episode because I'm here with my good friend, business partner, business entrepreneur, the one and only Mr. Jesson James. Ah, thank you very much for having me, man. It's great. I'm excited, it's good to be here. It's great to have you in the studio. It's been a while, but I'm um, glad, I'm glad I'm back. It's great to hang out. It's, it's been an incredible journey. It has. You know, for you and I uh, over the last five years. Yeah. Uh, that we've known each other, so it's a real honour and privilege to have you in the studio and on the po and on the podcast. Thank you. So, hey, look, we we know you're super successful, multiple businesses, international speaker, award winner, multiple streams of income. And before we get into all that sort of nice jazz, yeah. um, could you just take us back, Jesson, to you know where this entrepreneurial stuff started, you know, was it something that happened in your childhood? Did you initially go down more a traditional route? Um, how did it all start? Yeah, um, it's a great question. I think people often ask me like, well, how did your journey begin? And um, I think it first began with my mum and dad decided to have a baby. Now that's a different story. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but, uh, but no, it, it actually um, stems from my childhood, 110%. And um, I remember growing up um, in East London, Mum and dad working all the time, really hard, um, and and not being able to afford nice things. We always had a roof over our heads, you know, we'd never run out of food. We couldn't afford nice things, holidays, all that kind of stuff. And I used to watch mum and dad work really hard. Dad dad worked in Inland, Inland Revenue, tax office, um, and used to literally leave home in the morning, come back in the evening. That was it, standard. Was never at a parents' evening, never at a sports day, never at any of that stuff. Uh, mum would wake up at half four every morning, she would um, get the house ready, get stuff ready. She'd prepare stuff for my dad when he gets back from work, all that kind of stuff. Make sure me and my brother are okay, whatever it might be. And she used to walk to work to save the bus fare. And um, I used to watch her do all this, like rain, everything. So, so literally it was like every penny counted. Every, every, like, every. She, she, yeah, literally every penny. Every penny was accounted before. Yeah. Yeah and it was just to really survive rather than thrive. 100%. And, and what did that do for you? You know, as a young lad seeing this, what, what happened to your mindset? What was your outlook on life? And how did that make you feel? And what effect did that have on you? Well, I'll be, I'll be honest with, if anyone's listening, I'm gonna be upfront with you. Um, I hated it. Um, I actually blamed my parents for a long time. I, I used to go to school with my brother's second-hand clothes, um, hand-me-downs, you know, Trousers that were too short for me, jack ups is what they called it back then, right? Um, I used to, to wear like cheaper to the cheapest trainers. Um, I used to get bullied for that, for the way I looked. I also got bullied for the color of my skin, I'm just being honest. Um, all this stuff happened, and I, I spent a lot of time blaming my parents for not why why has that kid got Nike Air Max? Why have I got this? Why have that got why can't you buy me? Why can't why 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 why? Poor me. Poor me. Yeah. Victim mentality. It's okay for them. It's okay for them. Listen that blah 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 blah. Yeah. And at seven years old there was a tipping point in me because I, I had enough of it. And it's crazy because we were talking about this earlier and I, it was a tipping point for me that made me go, okay, why is this happening? and how can I make it better? And clearly I'm only seven, so I don't know how to do it. And I didn't actually do anything when I was seven, but what I feel it sparked in me as a seven-year-old kid was a desire for wanting more and a desire to go and do it yourself. 
And I, I decided that, you know, in my heart, some way, some form, you know, things would get better. And everything I used to see my parents do, it's, it's, it's funny because sometimes you, you look up to your parents, don't you? And you, you get inspired by them and things like that. And the things that I got inspired about from my parents weren't actually linked to things they were doing. It was more their behaviors. I got inspired by their compassion, by their love. They were always generous. You come to my house, there was always a plate of food for you. Like you, you're in trouble, the doors are always open. That sort of good, good old fashioned. Good, good values in store. Quality you. values, yeah. Care about people, treat people nice, help someone in need, give them your last penny if you've got it, whatever it might, that sort of stuff. That inspired me from my parents. But their way of making money didn't. You, you saw their frustrations. I and saw it. I saw them I, argue. I, I, I love, yeah, I saw them argue. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got very similar backstories. You know, grew up in a rough council yeah. estate. My mum, my mum was a single mum. You know, trying to bring up me and my brother. Um, I used to watch her. You know, cry to go, cry herself to sleep yeah. at night. Yeah. Find it hard putting food on the table. And, and you know what? Being bullied at school was horrific. And kids can be bloody nasty. They are. Man. And I know it still goes on today. I know it still goes on today, and it's horrific. But similar to you, it's almost like I had this moment. And for me, it was eating a cold tin of spaghetti bolognese with my mum and my brother in a cold, dark, damp room. But it was a moment that said, this isn't okay. And I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna make a success of yeah. myself and I'm yeah. gonna look after my yeah. mum and my brother. Yeah. Um, that's phenomenal. So uh, what, what happened after then? Obviously, you, know, you, you, you made that decision, you, um, you know, went through primary school, ended up in secondary school, yeah. and, and then how did it all develop from there? Yeah, so, well, just before going into primary school, um, something actually happened in, in um, sorry, just before going to secondary school, something happened in primary school, um, which, which kind of shifted my whole mindset about humanity. Um, it, I, I, look, again, looking at my parents, their compassion for people, it kind of, it, from a young age, I've always wanted to help. And I remember at seven years old, bearing in mind, I'm getting bullied, all this kind of stuff's going on. And I, um, and, and I genuinely feel when you're going through pain, um, it helps you, like, if you're going through pain, it can help you understand love and compassion because you don't want to see other people go through pain. And I'm going through all this pain here, and there was this kid, like, I've forgotten his name, but he just, I just remember he had really curly hair, disheveled, um, no one wanted to play with him, it was the oddball. And I remember he used to come in with, like, dirty clothes, all that kind of stuff. And I still, till today, don't know how it happened. Seven years old, he, came, he used to come to school with no food. And I don't know how it happened, like seven years old. I mean, how does that even get slip under the radar? And my mum always used to give me a packed lunch. Um, so, so what I started doing was giving that kid my sandwiches. Every day, just give him my sandwiches. Because he didn't have any food, give it to him. Because I, I knew when I, get, when I went home, I'd get fed. But when I got home, I was hungry, because I didn't have any lunch. So I did this for a couple of weeks, and I was scared to tell my mum, because I thought I'd get in trouble. And I remember a couple of weeks later, I couldn't take it anymore. I was hungry. I got home. I said, Mum, I'm hungry. She's like, what, what happened to your lunch? And uh, I told her what I was doing. And I did get in trouble, actually, but for a different reason, for not telling her sooner. Because right. <laughs> she started making double sandwiches. Oh, how beautiful is that? Yeah, to go and how give beautiful. this kid, right? Um, and so what I'm trying to say is, is like, from, from that pain, it, it comes compassion and love. And this is what I'm trying to say. It's like, in business, in entrepreneurship, it's about how you make people feel. And if you can stop making it about yourself and turn your attention onto other people, everything changes. So for me in that moment, by going through bullying, you know, racism, you know, wearing cheap stuff, feeling like worthless, like to the point where I didn't even like myself, in that moment of helping somebody else, suddenly your problems seem insignificant. And you've got purpose all you've of a purpose. sudden. You're caring for someone 100%. else. And I'm sure that boy was like made up, right? 100%. I'm sure he's absolutely made up. 100%. I mean, and obviously he couldn't understand why I was doing it, but he was hungry as a kid, right? So like, for me, what I'm trying to say is, is that that sparked something in me that if you can add value to others, you'll be okay. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, give give back, give back for sure. And, and, and I know you are, you know, one of the most caring, generous guys that I've Thank ever, you. ever met. You know, you always come from a place of service in all of the businesses that you have. And, you know, you're in the, the training and educational space and, you know, you help multiple business owners and people start scale and grow. And we're, we're going to get into all of that type yeah. of stuff. Yeah. So um, for you, um, where did the art of making money start? Mm. Love that. So I started my first business when I was 11. Nice. <laughs> um, because again, 
resourceful. It's like, how can I, rather than blame mum and dad, blame mum and dad. And I remember going on holiday to Mauritius, which is where my parents are from. Um, and um, I remember going there for the first time, 11 years old. They scraped every penny they could. We didn't stay in hotels, any of that kind of stuff. I just remember like they didn't have any pocket money or spending money. They literally scraped the money together to get the flights. And we stayed at my dad's cousin's place. And I, this is the first time I'm meeting all of, of, of his children and all these little second cousins and all these, little, all these kids I didn't know. <laughs> and, um, and what fascinated me about that was how simple they lived and how much fun they had. And one of the things that they did for fun is that they had these, in Mauritius they've got these little uh, Chinese firecrackers, like you just light them and they, they just like blow up, it's like little cheap things. And I thought, wow, like, I don't know if you remember Liam in school. Do you remember you used to have these little paper ones that you throw yeah, on the floor? Yeah, throw and they, on the floor and they, they bang. Pack, yeah, right? love them. And I thought, these are freaking 10x of those. Like, these are going to be amazing. <laughs> so I thought, I'll, I'll, I'll smuggle some in. So my first business was actually smuggling firearms. Now, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I smuggled these fireworks into my mum's uh, suitcase. She didn't even know I did it. Like, literally the night before we were leaving, like, I popped it in the popped suitcase. Popped them in, in the bottom. As soon as we got back to England, I like, got them out. Um, and I started selling them in school. Right. And obviously it's not a lot of money, but I was selling them in school. And that was my first experience of transacting. And um, it was great because it was like, I gave value to that person, they had fun, and then I, I got paid. Uh, where it all went wrong is one of the kids uh, decided to throw some of them off the top of a double-decker bus. <laughs> in his school uniform. Not a good idea. Not a good idea. <laughs> in his school uniform. Um, obviously one of the members of the public knew which school he went to, grassed him up, and then he grassed his dealer up. <laughs> <laughs> the arms dealer. The, the arms dealer. <laughs> Uh, and that business got shut down real quick. Uh, and then I went on to do something similar like you, uh, tuck shop. Tuck shop. Uh, I used to see them selling sweets and chocolates, and uh, I don't think they do that now, but like sweets and chocolates out the, out the window in, in, the, in the playground. And I thought, hang on, mum always used to buy this stuff in bulk, so I used to take it from home and literally sell it in the playground, <laughs> making money. That got shut down because I got caught. And then, um, I'm, not, I'm not painting a good picture for entrepreneurship <laughs> here. I've been shut down twice so far. Um, and then the third time, um, I was 15 years old and it was just at the time when mobile phones were starting to come out and be trendy. And I don't know if any of the viewers are, I want to say old enough, young enough to remember the Nokia phones with the changing faces. I don't know if you remember those, Liam, we're showing our age now, like changing faces and all this kind of stuff. Um, and I remember walking into a mobile phone shop, which were becoming popular, these independent ones, uh, down in um, East Ham High Street in East London. Uh, and I remember talking to the owner and I literally experienced my first no money down deal. No money down, excellent. <laughs> As you know, I love no money down I know down you like your deals. no money down deals. I'm interested to hear about this no money yeah, down I knew mobile you'd want phone to, stuff. You'd want to know this one. So, <laughs> so I basically said to the, the, the owner of the shop, would you give me a bunch of these accessories? I can sell them to, to my school friends um, and I'll come back and I'll give you the money and if you want to give me some of it, you can. Wow. It was like a no, no brainer for him, but I don't know what, what he saw in me, but he gave me a shot. And he literally, I kid you not, he gave me a bin liner of um, you know, earphones and um, changing faces and the color changing aerials wow. and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, wow, I'm made up. So literally took all the stock, sold it in the playground, brought him back a wad of cash. Um, he was obviously he was impressed. Made, he was made up. Right? He was made yeah. up. And I remember him, I think it was a 10 pound note. Imagine there's a wad of cash there. He peels off a tenner and he gives me a tenner. Wow. And I'm like, are that, you actually it? having yeah. a laugh? <laughs> you taking are you me? kidding? Are you kidding me? Oh. Um, and it's not until I got older that I learned a lesson from that. Clearly, I'm only 15, I'm obviously annoyed. I'm like, I've just sold all this stuff for you, what's happened? And it's only when I got older that I, I connected the dots. This is feedback for all of you guys if you're listening right now. He or she who brings the most value to any equation gets paid the most, mm. just being honest. Now mm. think about it like this. It was his shop. He put up the risk for that. It was his stock. He put up the money for that. He gave it to a kid he didn't even know. He put up the most risk. He, I was just the dealer. Mm. He is the one who put the money up, set up his shop, got the stock, all that. Kind. He put the most value into that equation, not me necessarily. Mm. And and that's when it, you know, years later that I got the lesson. Got the lesson. I got the lesson from yeah. that. But going through school, no one teaches you to be a business yeah. owner. You know that. And, and we always talk about risk versus reward. Yeah, you know, yeah, a lot yeah. of people want the reward, but they're not willing to put in the risk. Yeah, you know. And you 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 went to that guy to say, hey, look, let, let me do what I do, yeah. and that gave you a massive lesson in life. 100%. And you know, it just goes to show, you know, 
anyone tuning into this now, you don't have to stay stuck. You've got to think outside the box. And there is absolutely opportunity all around us right now. And there's many, many ways in which you listening in can start generating mm. um, different types of income streams. Um, one of the things that I'm really passionate about um, and something I really believe in is that you've got to follow your heart and you've got to focus in on something that yes can make you a lot of money but something that you're going to enjoy and something you're going to be passionate about can you share some of your experiences around yeah. stuff that you've done that you've been really passionate about yeah uh, that'd be great yeah absolutely and, and um, I, I love that and i think my little caveat to that is follow your heart take your mind with you because because there are some things that you get emotionally involved in which are following your heart but they're not going to make you any money for example you know so for me um after leaving school um i, I didn't go into business I actually uh, studied as a nurse. Um, I became a psychiatric nurse um, because, again, society doesn't teach you to, you know, become an entrepreneur. Do you think? Do you think that came from the values that 100%. your parents installed in you when you were seven years of age? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Look, I'm not beautiful. being funny, I, and I'm, you know me. I say it how it is. Um, when I was studying as a nurse, um, those times they were taking a lot of international nurses from all, all different countries because, with all due respect, it was, uh, you know, we had a we had a shortage here in the UK. And for a lot of people, it was actually an easy way to actually relocate to the UK and get a work permit and, and, and visa and actually end up living here. So the, the downside to that is that there were a lot of people who got into the profession not because they cared. Okay. I'm just being real. Yeah. They just got into the for profession. For different reasons. Move for different country. Reasons. Move country, whatever it might yeah. be. Not so much that they cared. I was born here. I could have done anything. Um, and in fact, I did. I started off by going to, to university, London Guildhall University, trying to study uh, business information systems and a joint honours degree with French. I was like, what the hell was I doing? I was like, this is mad. Um, and the French turned out not to be French language. It turned out to be French civilization and history. I was like, I love the French, but I don't give a shit what happened in the past. <laughs> um, and I didn't want to do this anymore. And I said to my lecturer, I said, can I, can I, take, a, can I take a break? Can I take, what, what am I going to do? I said, look, just take a gap year. And I took a gap year. And a friend of mine got me a job in a private psychiatric hospital and I just fell in love, wow. literally fell in love. I know it sounds crazy, I was crazy people, that sounds crazy, but I fell in love with caring and watching people not just be unwell, but get better and go back to their lives. And so when you're talking about, you know, following your heart, my heart's always been in helping. It's been a seven year old kid, it's mm. always been in helping people. And so following my heart, it, it was, it was once, once I finished university, I became a nurse. Um, I, I actually worked my way up as a nurse, you know, in the private sector. I became the youngest ward manager in the UK at 27 years old. Um, and when you become a ward manager in the UK, um, well, I suppose it's in any, any country really, but in, in, in the private sector at least, you get given sales targets. How many nurses do you know with sales targets? Who's doing sales? <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. But my job was actually to go and sell beds to the National Health Service. Right. So um, not only manage the ward, manage my staff, look after patients, I also each week had to go out and do sales activity. And I made my employer six and a half million pounds in two years selling beds to the National Health Service. Um, and that just, just my department alone. And then 2009, July 2009, coming out of the, the recession, credit crunch, whatever you want to call it, my my boss told me that they don't need me anymore. Wow. And just like that, job was, gone. job was taken gone. away from me. And I don't know if anyone listening can relate to being betrayed before, being stabbed in the back, giving your all to someone or something and they just take it all away from you. Is how I felt in that moment. Yeah. Well, we, we know even lately the whole world's gone crazy. Oh, dude. And you know, what used to be a job for life is no longer a job for life. And the moment you're not needed in a company yeah. or they've got to do cutbacks, yeah. you could have been there 15, 20 years and that's it, you're gone. Mm. And one of the things that I love to talk about is that what a lot of people do is they just focus in on that main income stream. Yeah. So one income stream from a job, but what happens if you get sick? Yeah. What happens if you're made redundant? What happens if you lose your job, lose your business? What are you gonna do? How are you gonna survive? Hey, well, I really hope you've enjoyed that interview with me and the one and only Jess and James. That is actually just part one. So if you want to listen and watch part two, make sure you click the link in the comments because in part two, we're going to really look at the next part of the journey and we're going to be sharing some incredible tips with you. Hey, if you're new to this channel, make sure you hit subscribe, notification bell, leave me a comment below and I'll see you in the next video.